Hey guys, even here and in this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates but we're gonna start with this not necessarily bodybuilding news uh, per se but it is like the most interesting, the, the, the hottest topic in fitness industry right now these past couple of days it's about this guy right here, Liver King, who got caught for lying to people about his gear use. He was claiming natural, however, it turned out he's not. And we got some proof. There is a whole video, an hour long video, that went really viral in the past couple of days. As you can see, it has almost 3 million views right now. So, in this video, we're gonna see what Liver King actually has to say about this. And basically, he admits that he was, in fact, deceiving people, lying to people all along. Let me show you what he has to say. I fully own that I fucked up. I am as sorry as a man can be. And all I can do is take extreme ownership right now, be better, and lead myself to a better life as a better human. Again, thank you to everyone for the support, the criticism, the love, the hate, and above all else, the loyalty. Liver King. Hmm, loyalty above all, <laughs> interesting. First of all, I'm sure most of you guys following my channel are hardcore bodybuilding fans and you have experience with gear. So you probably know what kind of physique is achievable with and without it. And this kind of hardness, dryness, vascularity, this type of look that this guy has, you probably already knew it is not achievable naturally. He is just another fake natty like so many of them, like for example Michael Hearn, he's probably the most popular fake natty, uh, also Kali Muscle and so many others. We all know, whoever is doing bodybuilding knows when somebody is lying. If it looks too good to be true, it most likely isn't and there are like maybe, maybe there are outliers, you can never be sure, maybe he has some sort of alien genetics, 0.00001 genetics, you give them some benefit of the doubt, but really you know pretty much that it is not true and I'm sure most of you already knew this is not really news for you, but he has deceived so many people, probably a lot of kids who follow him, who believed what he had to say. However, finally, thankfully, the truth is out and Liver King kind of tried for a moment there to pretend like nothing happened. He kept posting stories, he kept posting like nothing happened. Maybe he thought this video won't go as viral as it did, but pretty much now everybody who is at least a little bit involved in fitness industry knows that the truth is out. And so 11 hours ago he decided to apologize to his followers for lying to them all this time. I mean it's really, it's ridiculous and it's surprising how many likes this post has and how many positive comments with a lot of likes are there, how many people actually support him now. But this first comment right here that I liked pretty much says everything that I believe and it is basically he didn't care about lying until he got caught. He never took that <laughs> extreme ownership, as he says, before he got caught. Now it's over. He has The, the video has 3 million views and uh, he cannot keep lying. Everybody knows pretty much at this point. So the only thing he can do is admit or just simply disappear. What will he do now? What will his step be from now on? Is he going to say, I was on stuff, but I'm going to go off now and just keep with this lie? Or is he going to actually own what? he's doing and just become honest from now on but how can he do that because his entire role of this liver king is totally fake in every possible sense so this whole thing is pretty funny you can't take this seriously and I rarely ever focus on these clowns. I am a bodybuilding purist. I usually talk about strictly bodybuilding. But I thought this was very interesting. It's really a hot topic right now. I did follow it up a little. So I wanted to give you guys my take. I'm really happy that more plates, more dates actually did this. And I hope Michael Hearn is next. Whatever you guys think, don't tell me down below in the comment section. Okay, now let's move on to actual bodybuilding. This right here is Anton Voyant at two weeks out of Mr. Olympia weighing 270 freaking pounds. And look at the size of this freaking guy. He looks enormous right now. Earlier this year, he did Vancouver Pro. And most of us actually didn't perceive him as a threat 
to that title. However, he pushed Ian Wallier quite a bit. Later on, he won a show. He won Chicago Pro and qualified for a Mr. Olympia. But as you can see, I think this was his best look. I think he looked better in Vancouver. He looked actually really big. I mean, he stood next to Ian, who is a mass monster, who is seventh at the Mr. Olympia. Guys, that's that's pretty high. You know, that's a, that's a good bodybuilder. And Ian was bigger than he was the Mr. Olympia before. So... Anton actually stood next to him and he didn't get dwarfed or anything like that. He actually looked bigger in some poses. He actually pushed Ian Valier. So basically, Anton Weant might surprise us with his placement at the Mr. Olympia this year. Maybe, just maybe, he has a chance of actually cracking that top 10. It most likely won't happen, but if a couple of guys are completely off and he actually comes 100% on, it might happen, especially if you consider a couple of other factors. Uh, for example, when he was prepping for that Vancouver Pro earlier, I think a year before that, he realized that his health, his heart, is not exactly in the best condition possible. He shared that with us on his uh, IG, but he didn't give up bodybuilding, he didn't stop competing. He decided to do it, to prep for that show, but to do it conservatively. So he wasn't really doing a lot of gear, he actually used very, very small amounts. And this time around, two weeks out of Mr. Olympia, to me, it seems like he may have upped the dosages a little bit. Maybe he decided to risk things a little, because I don't think he ever looked this good. I don't think he was ever this big, this round, with this conditioning. Here, he looks like an absolute freak. Like, his shoulders looking super freaking wide. He looks huge, humongous. Legs are looking ridiculous. Waist size is also uh, looking very good, very controlled, uh, very tight. And he's 270, guys, 270 right now at his height. That's a lot of weight. He is going to be one of the bigger guys on that stage. And you guys tell me, what do you think? Where can he place best case scenario? What do you think? I think it would be interesting to compare him to Charles Griffin, for example. They are about similar caliber. Charles Griffin also won, let's say, a lower to mid-level pro show, California Pro. So these guys are kind of similar caliber, and I think it's pretty boring to always talk about the top 5, top 10. Let's talk about the guys who are, uh, let's say, in most people's prediction out of that top 10, but might slide in. For example, Charles Griffin right here, he's in that talk. Like, a lot of people are having him as potentially sneaking up in that top 10. Matt Jensen, his coach, included. I mean, he is his coach, of course, he's gonna say good things about him, but I don't think Matt Jensen would say something like that if he didn't really believe it. And based on what we saw so far from Charles Griffin, it looks like he's going to be the best version of himself we ever saw so far, and in some poses, he looks ridiculous. For example, this one, side tricep, looks insane. Like, his legs have been a weak point for him, but from the side right here, he just looks so dry, so, so shredded, so grainy, and he has the fullness, the roundness, but also the hard graininess, and he probably has one of the best backs in history of bodybuilding, because look at this madness, what the hell is going on here, look at this freaking back, this is impossible, this is this is insane. I don't think I ever saw a back looking like this. Like, this is one of the freakiest backs I ever saw. I mean, he could be like new Joel Stubbs. You know, Joel Stubbs was known for having the best back, arguably, in the history of bodybuilding, uh, one of the, but he never really had legs or anything else at that level of development. And I think it's similar thing with uh, Charles Griffin, because this back is just looking... <laughs> Look at this. It looks insane. It looks ridiculous. And he has a couple of other uh, standout body parts like that, so maybe they will take him a long way. For example, his hamstrings also are looking insane, look at this. Not just the hamstrings, but the look that he has, that crazy graininess that his physique possesses. Maybe that's gonna help him a lot, maybe he's going to end up in that top, top 10. Uh, but honestly, if I was a batting man, I would not put him in top 10. Definitely in the top 10 of freakiest body parts in bodybuilding, such as back and some other things, but no, top 10 of the Mr. Olympia, that's gonna be really tough. In my top 10, at 10th spot, they have Andrew Jack, and I don't see Charles Griffin with his structure beating somebody like Andrew Jack. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. All right, the next thing, the last thing I wanted to talk about is Hunter Labrada and his freaking legs. 
Uh, look at this. Like, what is happening right here? So his coach, his new coach, his current coach, Ben Chow posted this photo. And he says, to put things into perspective, he says, uh, I'm 274 pounds. That's fast at weight. And he's six foot one. And this is what his legs are looking like next to Hunter Labrada. So this is Hunter right now. Look at this insanity. Like, how much muscle can a human being pack in their legs i think he pretty much maxed out his uh, potential as far as muscularity i don't think he can get bigger than this i'm just curious what it's gonna look like on stage because the goal is to get super shredded that's what he talked about and at this point he has a lot of veins the scholarity is absolutely insane here uh, but the separation i don't think it's the deepest and I don't think it is a conditioning issue. I think he just packed too much muscle and his muscle got so dense that the separation got much more shallow simply because of the thickness of the muscle. And as I said, the goal he spoke about is, his coach spoke about is, the goal is to get him peeled, shredded. Last year, he wasn't super conditioned, so he received a lot of criticism for actually taking that fourth spot. Some people, many people actually had him uh, fifth instead of Nick and Nick in fourth because Nick was in better shape and they want to change that this year. They want to bring him more conditioned and he is bigger. But Brandon Curry made an interesting point in his prediction uh, for his top 10. He said that they're going to try to go with crazy conditioning and he will lose his signature fullness and size. But there is two weeks left. At this point, at two weeks out, he looks big, man. He looks massive. I don't see him losing any fullness. I know Ben Chow is a great coach and I think they're going to work things out. And I think this is going to be a really good version of Hunter Labrada. How well will it do? You guys tell me. And that's gonna do it for this video guys, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.